Boom, it's me, Joe the Coding Maniac. And today's video is about overfitting and how to avoid it. This video will be a bit more on the theoretical, but hopefully not on the boring side of things. We won't be diving into code, nor will there be any code on GitHub this time. So now let's dive in. What is overfitting? In machine learning, you're usually trying to predict outcomes for values that you've never seen before based on training data that you have seen and you know about. So overfitting is basically when your model is trained so specific on the training data set that predictions are bad for data that the model has never seen before. Generally speaking, you could say that your model will start to overfit as soon as a test error starts to increase where the training error is still decreasing. As you can see in this figure, this model has a sweet spot at five independent parameters and starts to overfit beyond this point. How does overfitting happen? There are several reasons for overfitting and I just want to talk about some of them. There are many more and this list is not complete. So the first one I want to talk about is the data model is too complex. Overfitting can be caused when the data model is too complex for the size of the data set. Usually you're trying to minimize some kind of cost function based on a training data set. This is basically you trying to fit the line as close to each data point in the training set as possible. If your data model is complex enough, there is almost always a way to exactly match the training set and therefore reduce the cost function to zero. The problem with this is that your model fits the training set perfectly, but when shown other data, the performance of this model will be really bad. The next thing I want to talk about is parameter tweak overfitting. So parameter tweak overfitting is a type of overfitting introduced during the parameter tuning of your model. So if you have a look at the diagram with the training and the test error, one would choose the model with the complexity relating to the minimal test error and would assume this model's generalization error would be equal to that test error. But you used your test data to tune your model. This means this data is no longer unseen by the model and should not be used to calculate the generalization error. One way to prevent this from happening would be to use an extra validation dataset, which is just used for parameter selection and tuning. The third thing I want to talk about is the choice of measure. Choosing the wrong measure of performance for your model could cause severe overfitting problems. You should always choose a measure that is appropriate for the problem you are trying to solve. It is good to have several measures while validating the performance of your model, but you should always have that one key measure for measuring improvement in performance. One example for a bad measure would be using accuracy for a very imbalanced data set. When 89% of the data points are in the majority class of this data set, then an accuracy of 89% is not that great and should not be considered the final model. The last cause of overfitting I want to talk about is sampling. Changes are that your data has been run through some sampling process before you split it into training and test sets. During this sampling process, some data points may be duplicated and you could end up with, this, with the subset of the same data points in both the train and the test data sets. Therefore, your test data set is no longer truly on scene. And if the overlap is too big, it may become overestimated. So you should really check how much overlap there is after sampling. There will be some, but you have to make sure that it does not affect your model too much. Now that we have talked about what causes overfitting, now let's talk about how to prevent it. Although I already mentioned some ways to prevent overfitting in the examples of how overfitting happens, I want to talk up here about general ways to prevent overfitting. Collecting more data. One of the more obvious ways to try is to try to collect more data. The more data you have, the harder it is to actually overfit your model. As an example, take a training data set with three data points. This is fairly simple to draw a line to perfectly hit all of them, which, is, which kind of means that it's also simple for a model or a function to fit them perfectly. But now imagine a training set 
who have 10,000 data points. You would need a high polynomial function or a complex model to perfectly fit all of these data points. Another thing would be to keep the model simple. So if you can't get more data, another way would be to try to keep your model simple. Try to reduce the number of independent parameters in your model. This is just the other way around of the collect more data example. A third option to prevent overfitting would be to regularize your data. There are regularization algorithms that penalize complex models and help keeping them simple. Two examples for linear models would be ridge regression and lasso, which penalize the model when the value of the coefficients gets too high. Common machine learning libraries like, like scikit-learn have usually implementations for them that are easy to use in your own code and model. Another technique to prevent overfitting would be cross-validation. Cross-validation can also help to prevent overfitting when you can't change model complexity or the size of the data set. With cross-validation, you're basically enlarging your data set synthetically because the percentage of your data wasted on the test set is smaller. So when using k-fold cross-validation, we divide the data into k subsets of equal size. We also build models k times each time leaving out one of the subsets from the training and use it as a test set. One way to prevent overfitting most people forget about is just think. Try to get an idea why your model behaves like it is. Try to come up with explanations and try to figure things out. If something looks just not right, investigate further. Use your common sense. Also, be skeptical. Be skeptical about your model. If something looks too good to be true, it probably is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe, write comments and follow me on Facebook. Thank you very much. See you the next time. Oh, and I almost did forget it.